uh, go through this real quick. First of all, I'm going to pass out a sign-up sheet, and I'm going to give Brad, Brad's contact information, okay, so you can get in touch with him, see what he's doing, and see what's going on with these bills. Because this man's a champion for freedom. Yeah. The, 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 second, the second thing is, I have a petition to stop the homeschooling bill. I'm going to pass that out tonight. And the third thing is a little personal. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm going to go on TV. I want to have as many, I want to have a pile of signed petitions on the sanctuary state city to show the people on camera. So I'm going to pass that out too. And Bobby, could you help out with that real quick? So they're, they're all over here and kind of spread them out and to make sure they don't get stuck. All right. So De Delaine Easton was the superintendent of education. She was the one that first started the trend about 10 years ago to outlaw homeschooling. Now she's running for governor. And the rest of the Democrats like this bill because they're saying, oh, what's wrong with some regulation of homeschooling? We're not outlawing it. Yes, you are outlawing it when you don't let the parents be able to do what they need to do. So um, abortion. Some of you are concerned about the issue of life based upon biblical scripture of Psalm 139. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. God knew you before you were born. And, and the life, I mean, that's, you know, life, liberty. That, that's one of the foundations of, of an American system. You don't have to be a Christian. You can be a Jew. You can be an atheist. You can be an agnostic and understand the preciousness of life. So with, with this, what about candidates and life? So should cover California, should they pay for abortion? The Democrats say it's Ben. Ben, yeah, thanks. And Republicans um, say no. Um, life begins at conception. That's one of the questions I'm going to ask Tra Travis Allen. A number of people, uh, uh, jo um, John Cox has the pro-life council endorsement because they were upset with Travis abstaining from some of the bills. And, uh, and at the same time, Travis says he is pro-life. So I'm going to be asking him um, about that a little bit more and I'll let you know what he says. Um, and so you can see where they stand on these different issues. And of course, the issue of partial birth abortion, yeah, that, that's probably the most gruesome. That's where they'll take the baby out almost all the way, but then they'll suck the brain out. Because if they took the baby all the way out to kill it, that would be infanticide. And so when a baby is viable, and so the Democrats all believe in partial birth abortion, Travis Allen and John Cox do not. This is where they stand. I'll send this to you so you'll have this and you can take a look at it more closely. But this is where the candidates stand on the issues with total government control on the left and the free market, no government uh, on the right. You can see where they stand in relationship to some candidates you know. So on the, these ratings, we have different ratings for the candidates uh, from a conservative biblical worldview versus a liberal secular worldview. Uh, that's in your handout, so I'm not, I'm not going to take up the time to go over that. You, uh, I'll point out a couple of things, though. I'll point out um, the worst candidate uh, from a conservative biblical worldview would be Delane Easton. And um, uh, the one that has uh, the uh, strongest biblical worldview um, uh, would be uh, um, uh, uh, John Cox with a 96. Lieutenant governor's race is really, um, in California, we have the top two. For the governor's race, we have the situation, it'll be the top two, it may not be a, two Republicans. You may have two Democrats. It's an unfair bill that was passed. It used to be in November, you could vote for Libertarian or Peace and Freedom. You could vote for other, these other third parties. 
You have that. You don't have that choice anymore. It's only the top two in June. So a few areas there could be two Republicans running against each other. A lot of areas will be two Democrats running against each other. In the case of Lieutenant Governor, um, probably it will be two Democrats. Now, in the Republican primary, the most viable candidate is John Cox. He's second in the poll, and he has the most money. And so that's where you take a look at the polling and see what happens. In this case, uh, the candidate that, uh, that um, the two candidates, Ed Hernandez, has a conservative worldview of one. Elena, she has a three. David Hernandez is an evangelical Christian. He has 90%. Um, Elena has millions of dollars put into her by the California Medical Association and by her dad, who happens to be a doctor. Uh, and so that's where she has so much money uh, for this campaign. Um, so you can see who's endorsing whom. Uh, the Apartment Owners Association, David Hernandez, uh, Emily's List, which is the abortion group, Elena. Uh, Ed Hernandez has, uh, has your friend, the, the California Teachers Association. I don't know. Ed Hernandez has the California Teachers Association. Yeah, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I'm right. <laughs> Um, and so you, you, you'll see in the handout uh, how they stand on the issues. Um, Secretary of State, how many think there's voter fraud in California? Yeah. There is voter fraud in California. In fact, I was talking about that at the Eagles Forum in Orange County tomorrow, and I've been on TV uh, about the voters fraud. Uh, I have a, um, what was it? Uh, it's tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I never know where I'm going. Yeah, they, uh, just to tell me. Um, so require voter ID. Mark Mishner, the Republican, says yes. Alex Padilla, uh, he's the current incumbent, and he says no. He is, in fact, he refuses to investigate voter fraud. He, uh, uh, right now, and I'm going to show in my talk, basically the DMV. We have a million people who are illegal aliens who have a driver's license, a special one. Yeah. Now in that driver's license, if they wanted to, they could register. They have to check off a box that says I'm a US citizen. It used to be they didn't have to check off that box, but they had to change the law. So now they have to check off the box that I'm a US citizen. But we estimate there's at least three to 400,000 illegal votes uh, in California on that. Uh, we need to be able uh, to uh, take back this office. And uh, this person is part of the deep state in the sense that he's protecting the establishment from any type of light in the investigation. This is probably one of the most important votes that you could have is in this race. The controllers, uh, you can see the handout, you can see the different issues for controllers. I'm just going to mention one thing about it. Um, we have cities and, and, and different things in California that's going to create a debt habit. That they're overspent, they're in debt, uh, but Betty Yee, she refuses to have, want to have an audit of the city and county employee salaries. Custas, uh, uh, he wants to. Um, treasures race, you can see um, aggressive uh, pension reform, Fiona Ma, she says no, Jack, he says yes. The contrast between these two are completely uh, opposite of each other. Now this 20 million to Planned Parenthood, when it looked like Planned Parenthood was not going to be funded, a half a billion dollars of funding of your U.S. tax money goes to Planned Parenthood. The bill that was just passed for the budget continued that. But when it looked like it wasn't going to be in there, this is what Fiona did. She said, I'm going to have 20 million of California tax money make up for the loss, and your tax money here in California would go to Planned Parenthood. The Attorney General, 
you these ballots. We're about ready to go over the ballots. These ballots are written by the Attorney General's office, which is filled with radical progressives who slant the copy and distort the issues on these propositions. When you think you're going to vote for yes, turns out to be no. When you think you're going to vote no, turns out to be yes. Right. So you can see the differences in these candidates. Now, this Steve Bailey happens to be an evangelical Christian conservative, and he's just the opposite of Xavier, if I get that right. Xavier. Xavier is the one who has filed one lawsuit after another lawsuit after another lawsuit against the uh, legislation of the Trump administration. Insurance Commissioner is Steve Poisner. Uh, he had been the commissioner before. Uh, and uh, you can see on the top 10 family values, he's 80% uh, 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 against those issues that are uh, trying to, in other words, I, I should say, he's 80% against those things like uh, uh, taking away homeschooling. Or this other bill that we didn't talk about, which would have killed every Christian college in California. This is the superintendent of public education. Your handout has all these different issues. I want to point out the issue on these two. Tony Thurman is a CTA supported candidate. They're giving him millions of dollars of support. And you can see on here with Marshall Tuck, he is an advocate of charter schools. And I've talked to him, I've, uh, I, I, I know him, uh, I disagree with him on so many issues, but I, I want to point out a couple of things. When I asked him about uh, the issue of allowing religious songs at Christmas in public schools, he said yes. And, and when I asked him about um, uh, enacting, uh, you, you ever watch the local news and you see these teachers being arrested, predator teachers? It happens all the time. And then they're put into another school or they're kept on the salaries and they're basically in some room by themselves. And you can't get rid of them. Well, Tuck says you gotta get rid of them. He also wants to see tenure reform. And, and on the transgender bathroom bill, Tuck, Tuck wants to get rid of it. Parental notification in case of abortion, he believes in that. And so uh, uh, on the, some of the issues, uh, uh, I, I, I find them refreshing. The U.S. Senate race is one of those where it will probably almost assuredly be the top two Democrats. I'm going to be finishing my betting uh, uh, on the U.S. Senate candidates in the floor, Republicans. None of them at this point have money. None of them have any rating in the polling. Uh, some of them are really good. There, there's you know 32 candidates running, and about 10 of them are. I, I would agree with close to 90% to 100%, but they have absolutely no chance. Abortion, uh, you can see where they stand on abortion, but uh, the leading Democrats uh, are all for abortion. On um, religious liberty, the leading Democrats are all against religious liberty. And in regards to Israel, Diane Feinstein's lukewarm, Kevin DeLone, De Kevin DeLone is a radical, progressive, Bernie Sanders type candidate that's running against liberal Dianne Feinstein. And you can see Dianne Feinstein has 42%, Kevin DeLone has 16, she has $22 million. 45th, so we're still doing our, our betting on the 45th. Many of you are in that area. Minnie Walters is the Congresswoman and many people are pretty proud of how well she's done and stood up while she's been in Congress. Uh, and you can see that she's uh, less government programs, 86%, and her conservative uh, biblical worldview, she has a 90% rating. On the 48th district, here we have a, a, a high, highly contested race between Congressman Dana Rohrabacher and many other candidates. These are the ones with the most money. Uh, these uh, our candidates have anywhere from 600,000 to 1.2 million to beat Dana Rohrabacher. Dana uh, has a conservative Christian worldview of 89%, the highest. 
He has a liberal secular worldview of 11%, the lowest. Uh, more government programs, uh, Dana has 8%, uh, which is uh, the, the lowest. And for less government programs, 92%. Um, he uh, is a free market guy. And interesting on this, I don't know if you know this, he was the one who for the last four years has fought Paul Ryan and those in Congress with his Save the Christians from Genocide Act. And he's been a warrior on TV and trying to save the Christians in the Middle East. Mm. <laughs> uh, Dana Rohrbach. But, but is he not also the founder of the Congressional Marijuana Conference? He does uh, believe in that, yes. Next. Oh, there we go. So on Orange County Sheriff, I, I'm, I'm going to send you information on that. I still have to talk to him. A very interesting race you have in here, a very important one. I promise you I will have that letter to you about Wednesday of next week with the final analysis on that. Board of Equalization is a little bit more clear. Um, the one that really stands out is Joe Anderson with a conservative biblical worldview of 96% and a less government position of 90%. Um, uh, 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 on this really important race in regards to taxes. On the state assembly, uh, Matthew Harper has been part of the, uh, there's, for those who care if somebody has uh, religious beliefs, uh, there's maybe out of all the, uh, Assembly and state senators, less than 5% of them are evangelical Christians. Uh, he happens to be one of them. He's got 86% biblical worldview for uh, less government programs, 89%. Now, if you really are, if you're, you're here tonight and you're a progressive and you want more government programs, you should go for Ryan Todd. <laughs> now, the judges. Let's go through the judges. The two most important ones are the uh, California Supreme Court. Now, if you saw that original slide, there's very few strict constructions to believe you don't legislate from the bench, you simply interpret the law. Carol gets a seven out of scale of one to 10. She's more of a strict constructionist. And she has been one of the few judges that has stood up against the progressive judicial activists on the California Supreme Court. Leandra is part of the deep state boy. She was hired in the Department of Justice uh, by Obama, and, uh, and then Brown selected her to the California Supreme Court. She's never been a judge. She doesn't have any training like that. She's really a politician type person. And she has a three. And what that means, when, when you have a one, two, three, or four, you're a progressive liberal that is a judicial activist. In regards to the uh, Court of Appeals, okay, you got the California Supreme Court, and the next one is you have the Court of Appeals. And, and uh, listen, so you know this, it gets a little confusing. For the California Supreme Court, for those two candidates, you're going to vote yes or you're going to vote no for each of them. They're not running against each other. You're just voting yes or you're voting no. And I have a, the only site in the United States that evaluates judges. It's called judgevoterguide.com. The same, same stuff on the other websites we have. But judgevoterguide.com. We're hoping to have a million Californians vote on that to transform this upcoming election. So the next level is also a yes or no. So you can see. Cynthia has a five, which means she's a judicial activist. Judith Howard has an eight, she's a strict constructionist. Richard Hoffman, a nine, strict constructionist. Pat, Patricia uh, has a nine. And then Marcia Slow, radical, progressive, and a three. And then we have Raymond, he has a seven. Douglas, he has an eight. Jeffrey has a five, so that's a judicial activist. Art McKinster, an eight. And then Joan, she has a six. Uh, I'm personally voting against her. She's more of a uh, judicial activist. And now you have the judicial election in Orange County. 
and these are the Superior Court. If you heard Brad, do you remember Brad said about the homeschooling that there was a case we won, and that was about homeschooling? Did you know about six years ago, a Superior Court judge said homeschooling was unconstitutional and illegal and banned it? And then it was appealed to a, to a panel, and that panel reversed it. But these Superior Court judges can be powerful, and you gotta vote for these. And, um, and, and so Theodore is a seventh, and Franklin uh, is, is a sixth, and that'll be on everybody's ballot in Orange County. Uh, and there's another judicial race in, can in, in, in Orange County, and I'll send you that, because neither of those candidates have, have filled out their form. Proposition 68. Now, we're going to go through this quick. So, Proposition 68 is a bond issue. Now, the bond issue 